Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome everyone to this afternoon's meeting of the Legislative Committee on Operations and Elections. And I believe we have all members present, Secretary. Uh, we're going to start with a work session and then we're going to recess and hear some bills. There's a lot of moving parts of the different committees today. So we'll start with our work session, then we'll recess, then we'll come back. I'll turn it over to Director Nick Anthony. Thank you, Chair. Nick Anthony from the Research, Direct, uh, Research Division, for the record. Uh, the first bill on work session today is SB 216. SB 216 uh, relates to elections sponsored by this committee and was heard in this committee on March 30th. SB 216 requires county and city clerks to establish and maintain a working relationship with each Indian tribe located within the county or city. Um, at the hearing, Chair Orenshaw submitted a conceptual amendment. It's attached to the work session document. The conceptual amendment would delete section three of the bill relating to tribal ID cards, would amend sections two and four uh, to require meetings between tribal nations and county and city clerks. It would also authorize Nevada's ease system, which is the absentee system, through the Secretary of State's office to be expanded to tribal members, and it would add a tribal liaison in the office of the Secretary of State. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Director, and I want to thank uh, the Secretary of State, the county clerks, and all of the uh, voting rights activists who worked so hard on the amendment on this legislation. With that, members, I would accept a motion to amend and do pass with the amendments listed in the work session. Amend and do pass. Motion from Senator Daly. Is there a second? Second from the Majority Leader. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, not seeing any discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Madam Secretary, please note that Senate Bill 216 passed unanimously, and uh, I'll take the floor statement for that one. Director Anthony. Thank you, Chair. The next bill on work session is Senate Bill 268. Uh, Senate Bill 268 requires the Secretary of State to submit an advisory question to voters concerning the regulation of the sale and use of fireworks in all counties of the state of Nevada. Uh, at, at the hearing and subsequent to, Chair Orenshaw has proposed an amendment, which I believe uh, would just limit the age to purchase fireworks in the state of Nevada to those individuals who are 18 years of age or older. That would be the only amendment. It would replace all the provisions uh, requiring it to go to a vote of the people and simply make uh, purchase uh, illegal for persons under the age of 18. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Director Anthony. So the language in the work session document committee members, would we would delete that second bullet about requiring any purchases in excess of 50 pounds of fireworks to be automatically reported to the state fire marshal. That would be deleted. Uh, the ballot advisory question, that language would all be deleted. What it would do in effect if this passes and gets signed into law is require statewide you'd need to be 18 years or old for the purchase of fireworks. And I do believe that that goes a long way towards increased safety. I appreciate all the stakeholders working with me, uh, the fire marshal and all the, uh, the folks who have been interested in this bill. With that, I would be open to a motion to amend and do pass with uh, the amendment being that the, there would be a minimum age of 18 required to purchase fireworks. That would apply to the safe and sane as well in Clark County? That would apply to the purchase, not to staffing any of the nonprofit charity booths. Thank you. Motion to amend and do pass. I have a motion to amend and do pass from Senator Daly. I have a second from Senator Krasner. Any discussion on the motion? Oops, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have had um, a lot of reservations about this bill um, for a variety of reasons. I understand there's been a change to the amendment today. Um, so I will uh, support it out of committee, but I am going to need to have some additional conversations and dig a little deeper into this because I just um, heard about the change to the amendment today and prior to walking in here was um, a no on this bill as it was proposed in the work session. So I will, uh, I'll vote yes to get it out of committee, but I'm going to reserve my right um, for any additional votes just because I think I still have some questions. 
Thank you, Majority Leader. I appreciate uh, your comments and your support. Minority Leader. Thank you. I'd like to do the same thing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minority Leader. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, Madam Secretary, please note that Senate Bill 268 with amended due pass passed unanimously uh, with Majority Leader and the Minority Leader reserving their right. Thank you. Director. Thank you, Chair. The next bill on work session is Senate Bill 326, revises provisions governing elections, uh, brought forward by Senator Daly and heard in this committee on April 4th. Um, Senate Bill 326 revises the requirements of certain persons, committees for political action, political parties, and committees sponsored by a political party to report contributions and expenditures. At the hearing, Senator Daly uh, orally presented and then submitted a written conceptual amendment, which is attached, uh, an amendment to change the word entities to organizations, amend the definition of committee for political action, amend NRS 294A.160 regarding the use of unspent contributions in a future election, and amend NRS 294A.365 to require the report to list the name and address of the recipient of the campaign expense or expenditure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, and Senator Daly, I appreciate all your hard work on the amendment. Is there a motion to amend and do pass Senate Bill 326? Motion, to amend. motion from Senator Daly, is there a second? Second from the Majority Leader. Any discussion on the motion? Yeah. Minority Leader. Uh, thank you. Um, I need to go back through the amendment, and so I'm going to reserve my right to vote no. Thank you very much, Minority Leader. Any further discussion? Senator Krasner. Uh, I'm going to reserve my right to change my vote prior to floor session as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Krasner. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Madam Secretary, please note Senate Bill 326. Passed unanimously, Senator Krasner and uh, Minority Leader Severs Gansert reserving their right. Director. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the next bill is Senate Bill 327, revises various provisions relating to elections, sponsored by Senator Orenshaw, heard on March 30th. Uh, Senate Bill 327 uh, revises provisions relating to the establishment of a polling place, ballot drop box temporary polling place uh, within an Indian reservation or Indian colony. At the hearing, Senator Orenshaw submitted a written conceptual amendment. It's attached. Um, the amendment does three things. It, it requires the facilitation of planning at least three months prior to the election, requires tribal nations to send information to the Office of Secretary of State and County Clerk, and provide that if the required information is not received, the tribe cannot be reached, then we'll be assumed that the tribe is opting out to not have a polling place or ballot drop box. Thank you, Director. And I definitely also want to thank the, the clerks, the registrars, Secretary of State for working with me on this bill, as well as all the voting rights organizations. I would accept a motion to amend and do pass Senate Bill 327 with the amendments in the work session document. Motion to amend and do pass. Thank you. I have a motion from Senator Daly. Is there a second? <clears throat> second from the Majority Leader. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Madam Secretary, please note the Senate Bill 327 passed unanimously, and um, I'll take the floor statement for that as well as for the prior bill. I think I neglected to take that one. Thank you. Uh, Director Anthony. Thank you, Chair Orenshaw. The next bill on work session is SB 387. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, SB 387. SB 387 uh, relates to the state personnel system. Uh, it was sponsored by Senator Pazina, and it requires the Division of Human Resource Management to periodically review positions in the classified service and adjust uh, based on qualifications in lieu of a four-year degree where applicable. There were no amendments to this bill. Thank you very much, and I appreciate how hard Senator Pazina has worked on this bill. Uh, with that, there are no amendments. Members, would there be a motion for do pass Senate Bill 387? Motion, do pass motion from Senator Krasner, and is there a second? Second. Second from Senator Daly. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Madam Secretary, please note Senate Bill 387 passed unanimously, and I'll give 
Fourth statement to Senator Pazina and Senator Daly, if you could be back up if for any reason Senator Pazina is not there that day. Thank you. Director. Thank you, Chair. The last bill on work session today is Senate Bill 406. Uh, it's an act relating to elections. SB 406 makes it a Category E felony for a person to engage in certain prohibited acts against an election official. Uh, this bill was brought forward on behalf of the Secretary of State. There is an amendment attached from the Office of the Secretary of State would delete sections two through five of the measure and then clarify that nothing in the bill should be used to preclude the rights of those engaged in elections observation. Thank you and I thank the Secretary for, and his staff for all his hard work on this bill. With that, I would accept a motion to amend and do pass Senate Bill 406. Motion to amend and do pass. Motion from Senator Daly, is there a second? Second from the majority leader. Any discussion on the motion? Not seeing any discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Madam Secretary, please note that Senate Bill 406 passed unanimously, and uh, I'll take the floor statement for that one. And I think that brings us to the end of our work session for today. And we are going to be in recess. And as soon as I think we get done with some other committees, I uh, will be back and try to get us going on our hearings as quickly as possible. So we are in recess.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to call the Legislative Committee on Operations and Elections back to order. We are very, very lucky to have Senator Scheibel here today to present her bill, and uh, thank you for being here. Thank you very much. My name is Melanie Scheibel. I'm the State Senator for District 9, and um, I'm pleased to be joining you today to present SB 162. Um, SB 162 is a bill that is intended to protect every eligible person's right to vote, and I'd like to turn your attention to an amendment. Um, it is essentially a gut and replace amendment, um, and it is conceptual in nature um, because LCB legal is are fantastic miracle workers who turn all of my ideas into legal language, and I didn't give them enough time to do that on this one. But basically, um, th what we're trying to do in SB 162 is ensure that anybody who finds themselves in custody, in a detention center, um, in, in what we would normally call a jail in the state of Nevada, who is eligible to vote, is still able to exercise that right to vote. So we're talking about people who um, may be temporarily detained pursuant to criminal charges, and particularly people who are awaiting a trial. So somebody, for example, who has been arrested and charged with a felony um, charge, who has no prior felonies on their record, maintains the presumption of innocence. They are innocent until proven guilty. But here in Nevada, just like the rest of the United States, there are times at which we are able to keep those people in custody for the safety of the community. However, they do not lose their right to vote. But somebody could be incarcerated in a detention center or a jail for two months, six months, eight months, even years awaiting their fair, impartial trial in front of a jury. And so if they are awaiting trial while an election is going on, they are still eligible to vote. And the purpose of SB 162 is to ensure that they are also able to vote from a practical stance. So I worked with um, the Sheriffs and Chiefs Association of Nevada, with the, elector, the elections officials in, um, in our two largest counties, as well as the Nevada Association of Counties, to come up with a way to ensure that we created a statutory protection for people who are eligible to vote but in custody um, that is also practical and feasible. And so what we came up with was what you see in the SB 162 amendment. Um, which is to require every agency that oversees a detention center just to come up with a policy um, and submit that policy to the Secretary of State and to the Legislative Commission via the Legislative Council Bureau that explains how they're going to facilitate voting for people who are in their custody. Um, I, I'm not sure how many are here today, <laughs> but um, you know, at another time, I would welcome a, a longer discussion with those agencies to describe the ways that they currently do this. Um, it was my experience in working with all of these agencies, and, and I don't want to speak out of turn and speak for them, but I think it is important for the committee to know that they have been wonderful partners in this. And every single one of them said to me that you know, if there is a person in their custody who was eligible to vote in an election and didn't get the opportunity to vote, they want to know about that because they want to fix it. And so uh, the purpose here is to um, have all of these agencies put those policies into writing if they haven't already and submit them to those two centralized locations, the Secretary of State and the Legislative Commission. And then then the bill also requires that they provide these policies every year or 90 days before any special election. So if the policy doesn't change, they can just resubmit their policy and that's their way of telling the Secretary of State that they haven't made any amendments. If there has been a change or an update to the policy by submitting their current policy in whole, that's their way of indicating that they've made a change to, change to their policy. Um, some of the, the current Strategies for ensuring um, access to voting in our Nevada jails and detention centers include utilizing mail ballots um, and some of the larger detention centers are also considering moving to the EASE program, which is what some of our military and other absentee voters utilize online uh, with a laptop. And uh, the SB 162, as amended, is supposed to provide that flexibility so that if it makes sense for a particular location to have one dedicated laptop and allow every um, person in custody who wants to vote to utilize that same laptop, that can be their policy. Um, if they prefer to utilize mail-in ballots, then they can write a policy that um, also includes the practical considerations like when would a person who's in custody have to request that ballot? Um, when would they vote? How would they ensure the secrecy of the ballot? What uh, 
location within the detention facility will they provide for that person to vote. And um, again, all, all of the, uh, the law enforcement agencies and the election officials that I talked to are already doing this. They've worked out ways that one room within a jail can be utilized for mail-in ballots, and then they have people go in one at a time to fill out their mail-in ballot to you know, maintain the secrecy, but then utilize the official mail ballot for purposes of counting. And um, I, I think that the importance of this is to ensure that today and into the future, people always have access to exercise their right to vote. And so uh, by having these policies in place and in a location where um, you know they, they can be readily accessed, we'll be able to identify any problems with people accessing their right to vote in jail. Um, and Hopefully it never happens, but should there be in the future some problem, should there be people who are incarcerated and unable to cast a ballot, they have a statutory provision to rely on that says that every agency is supposed to have a policy that does this. Um, I think that the, the Constitution already protects their right to, to vote, um, but it's important that our laws mirror that and, and provide the bridge from the constitutional right to the practical implications of removing barriers and ensuring access for every eligible person to cast a ballot. And so with that, I'm happy to take any questions the committee might have about um, SB 162 and the conceptual amendment. Thank you, Senator Scheibel. Thank you for presenting this important legislation. I think so many of us, you know, take it for granted about the rights of the accused to be able to still participate in, in democracy. Members, any questions for Senator Scheibel? Senator Daly. Comment more, comment more than a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so yes, I, I'm glad to hear that all of the jails or the people you've talked to are already doing it. I also think it's helpful to have it reinforced is that not only do you have to keep doing it, it's great that you were, but here's the guidelines. Uh, so if somebody says, hey, I want to stop doing it for some reason, no, you can't do that. Um, so I, I think I think it's uh, important. I like the amendment. Uh, it creates a perfect amount of or a reasonable amount of flexibility for people to actually accomplish this without uh, putting the thumb too hard on them. Uh, but uh, so thank you. That was, that was it, just a comment. Thank you very much. Uh, not seeing any additional questions, uh, I'd like to now open it up for support. I'll start here in Carson City, then we'll go down to the Sawyer Building, then we'll go to the phone lines. Thank you for joining us. I apologize to everyone for the start, stop, start, stop, with just frenetic time of session, and thank you all for your patience. Good evening, Chair and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Christine Saunders, and I'm the Policy Director with the Progressive Leadership Alliance in Nevada, here in support of Senate Bill 162. A plan we believe our democracy is most vibrant the more people are participating in it. In elections prior, we have worked with the Mass Liberation Project to mail hundreds of absentee ballot request forms to eligible voters who are in jail awaiting trial so that their constitutional right to vote can be recognized. Nevada has made great strides in the past five years to increase access to the ballot box and encourage people to vote with voting rights restoration, tribal polling locations, and vote by mail. Passing Senate Bill 162 would continue to put Nevada forward as a leader in democracy, and we urge your support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, committee. Chair Orenshaw, Isaac Tenorio with Strategy 360. On behalf of our Campaign Legal Center Action, we respectfully urge you to support this bill. Uh, voting gives incarcerated people a sense of power, agency, and connection to their community. Uh, this mitigates the negative collateral consequences that stem from even short periods in jail. And voters are not just interested in national elections. Many simply want to say, want to say in their children's school board or their local elections. For these reasons, I urge you to support SB 162. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chair Orenshaw and members of the committee, for the record, my name is Annette Magnus, and I'm here today in my personal capacity just to say this has been such a great bill to work on, um, and I am so excited about this bill because I think it's important to improve access to our ballot box, and I think this bill does just that. So thank you, and please pass this bill. Thank you very much for your testimony. I'd like to go down to the Sawyer Building in support of the measure. Anyone who'd like to be heard? Okay, I don't see anyone at the Sawyer Building in support. So broadcasting, can we go to the phone lines? Testimony in support. And I neglect, neglected to mention it earlier, we are limiting it. testimony to two minutes per speaker. And 
Thank you, Chair. To testify in support of SB 162, press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Good afternoon, Chair, Owners, and Committee members. For the record, my name is Brian Harris, and I'm here to testify um, on behalf of Battleborn Progress in support of SB 192. Voting is a way for individuals to have a say in their future and a right that should never be infringed upon. People who have been who have not been convicted of a crime still have their constitutional right to vote, and it gives them a voice in shaping their future. We urge your support of this amazing piece of legislation, and I want to thank Senator Shepard for pushing this bill forward. Please support SB 162. If you have just joined us and would like to testify in support of SB 162, press star 9 and take your place in the queue now. Chair, there are no more callers willing to testify in support. Thank you very much. I'd now like to go to opposition to the measure. I'll start here in Carson City. Anyone who's opposed to the measure wants to be heard. Not seeing anyone here. Down at the Sawyer Building, anyone who is opposed to this measure and wants to be heard, please state your name for the record and proceed. Whoever would like to begin, please state your name for the record. I, if you're already talking, I couldn't hear you. So maybe your microphone's not turned on. Is this for opposition in Las Vegas? Yes, opposition testimony. Yes, opposition testimony. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, my name is Leslie Quinn, and I oppose AB 162. I'd like to point out that AB 162 almost mirrors AB 286. I oppose both of these bills, not because non-felons don't have a constitutional right to vote, but because most non-felons in county or city jail are awaiting conviction. Non-felons could be in jail for something minimal, such as a bench warrant for parking tickets. However, they can also be there for sex trafficking or mass murder. Still, all are in, all are in jail awaiting a conviction. Allowing a non-felon to come outside the detention center jail on election day creates a breach of safety and security to the public. It would also create a financial hardship on the city or county jail who are already short-staffed, adding additional staff to facilitate such a breach of safety and security. The elections department would also incur expenses, putting such polling places at a jail site. People in the city or county jail have other options, including mail-in ballots that can be taken to them by an approved visitor or requesting an absentee ballot. They can fill this out, seal it, and give it to their caseworker. Then only on election day, the non-felon ballots can be picked up by the elections department once and done. All this will also minimize voting corruption and fraud. I ask my Assemblywoman Brittany Miller and Senator Marilyn Dondero Loop to oppose SB 162 and keep Nevadans' safety and security a priority, as you said you would during your 2022 campaign. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Please state your name for the record and proceed. Hello, my name is Susan Prophet, and I'm the vice president of the Nevada Republican Club, and I couldn't help but notice that there was only one gentleman on the far right, which is the far left for you, that was paying attention to this young lady who was testifying. And I find that rude. Um, <laughs> I oppose this bill uh, because it's breaking state and federal election laws. The first red flag was the section five where it says, except uh, when otherwise provided in this section, the, the city clerk shall allow members of the general public to observe the conduct of voting at the polling places for a city election. No member of the general public may observe the conduct of voting at a polling place established pursuant to Section 4 of this Act without the approval of the person who is ministering the city jail. The second red flag is that you don't want people observing, and the third is that there's no chain of custody. There never has been been in Clark County, and there never will be a fair election until there is voter ID. Pass it. Um, also, 
And for the record, the registrar of voters at Clark County um, broke the state and federal laws every single day. Ms. Prophet, and you Ms. Prophet, reassigned her as the... Ms. Prophet, mm -hmm. I, I please ask right, you to speak to the bill. I, you're testifying right, in opposition to the bill, and I understand you have other concerns. Excuse That's me, you're fine. taking my time. You are taking my time. No, certainly I would like 30 you, seconds Prophet, more. I'll, glad to give you extra have, time, but I please keep to the bill. I also have an audio... I also have audios of them misbehaving, all right? I know for a fact that you're not running uh, fair elections. Um, observations, uh, um, let's see. Uh, sorry about that. Um, you know what? I'm done. You know that you're not running a fair election. I have the proof, and the young lady who was speaking earlier said that all of the different um, agencies within the government had, um, you know, agreed to this and, and put their two cents worth in. But you know what? I think it's kind of like Biden said, y'all all have created the most extensive and broad election fraud um, system in, in, in history, and I can prove it. I look forward to the opportunity. Thank you for your testimony. And I just want to remind everyone that, you know, we take notes on our laptops. We are there. It's kind of a digital age now, but a lot of us take notes on our laptops rather than notebooks. So we are certainly paying attention to all the testimony. Please state your name for the record and proceed. Katrin Ivanov, I-V-A-N-O-F-F. -F. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please uh, proceed, Ms. Ivanov. Oh, okay. AKA Mrs. Fixit, Assembly District 42, Senate District 9. I oppose this bill. Uh, you guys eroded the public trust in our elections through the bills that you snuck up last time around. And now this is only gonna do it further. Unless this is your intention, you should be opposing this bill because we have so many problems with elections. We can't even, uh, see and observe properly in the ones that are out of jail, how are we going to see and observe the ones in jail? This country survived over 200 years without people in jail being able to vote right then and there. There are other ways for them to vote, especially now with the mass, mass mailing. I'm surprised they're not getting all mass mailing in jail. But uh, please oppose this view the way it is written. It would erode the trust in our election, and it's already eroded to n degree. Thank you, and have a lovely day. Thank you for your testimony. Good afternoon, sir. Please state your name for the record and proceed. C-Y-R-U-S-H-O-J-J-A-T-Y. I will ditto the comments made by previous folks and even the ones after me. You know, if you want us to believe the election's true, I think I've, I don't want to sound like a parrot, but just prove if other things you've told us make sense, like the jabs, vaccines. We want to get a report, update, yield. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, not seeing anyone else in oppos opposition in, at the Sawyer building, uh, I'd like to now go to the phone lines. Oh, I believe wait, there is one gentleman. Go, please go ahead, sir. Please state your name for the record and proceed. Um, first name, last name, F-A-C-E-Y. Um, I want to talk kind of, I, I, was, I was the Republican nominee for uh, Assembly District 42 in the last election. And in talking to hundreds and hundreds of fellow Nevadans, um, there is an issue regarding um, confidence in the conduct of public elections. Mr. And Facey, when I, we, Mr. Facey, I appreciate Mr. your Facey, comments. They're fine for public comment, but this is opposition to uh, this to legislative measure. This so this please, I'd ask you to so speak to the bill. Speak to the bill. Okay. Um, well, what I'm, my, the, the, the point is, is that when we pass a bill like this, where we consider a bill like this, we should consider what it does to the public trust and confidence in the elections. And the way that I see this is written, and th this is not something that will strengthen the public trust, uh, but rather strengthen the public mistrust. And because of that, um, I'd like to register my opposition. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, sir. Anyone else at the Sawyer Building who wants to be heard in opposition to the measure? Okay, not seeing anyone. I'd like to go to the phone lines now broadcasting. If there's anyone in opposition who'd like to be heard. 
Thus define the opposition of SB 162. Press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Thank you to the chair and members of this committee. My name is Alita Benson, executive director of the Nevada Republican Party, testifying in opposition to SB 162 on behalf of the Nevada Republican Party. Criminals are not supposed to get the same privileges as law-abiding citizens. That includes voting. Do the crime, do the time. It's telling that the sponsor of this bill is against voter ID, which is supported by three out of four Nevadans. But she does want to make it easier for Ms. Benson, to Ms. Vote. Benson, I, I do have to ask you to, to vote please Nevada. speak to the bill. Yeah. And yes. again, we don't want any personal attacks against I any am. members, but please speak to the bill. This, this bill is not about some of the subjects you've mentioned. No. Okay. It's easy to vote. You have mail ballots that come to you unsolicited. You don't even have to vote by precinct. Would Robert Tell, best known for being charged with murdering reporter Jeff Durbin, get to vote? Is he someone that we should bring a ballot box to in jail? What about Amber Mitchell, who let her child eat fentanyl pills while she was gambling? And he died after she left him bleeding out in her hotel room to return to the tables. Did she get to vote? Please stop protecting criminals. Put law-abiding citizens first. Vote no on Senate Bill 162. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Broadcasting, is there anyone else on the phone lines that wishes to speak in opposition? Yes, Chair, one moment. Caller, last three digits, 080, press star six to unmute yourself, please. Moving on to the next caller. Hello, my name is Jessica Ansel, and I'd like to oppose the bill and echo of all opposition in front of me and behind me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Broadcasting, do we have anyone else on the phone lines? Yes, one moment, Chair. Please state your name for the record and proceed. I heard someone, but I couldn't make out anything. Uh, hello, uh, may I speak? Yes, please state your name for the record okay. and proceed. Um, thank you. Um, Oscar Williams, for the record, O-S-C-A-R-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S, -L -L -I -I Reno, Nevada. Um, I, I don't think jailers that have to conduct elections and report to the Secretary of State. This bill puts authority of the Secretary of State over jails. Um, it's it's improper use of authority there, I think, on, on some respects. Um, but there's something else. Uh, electronic voting, which is kind of the underlying underbelly of this bill, it, it wants to bring electronic voting and registration into the jails. And expanding the concept of electronic voting, eliminating paper and all other uh, type forms of, of, of dealing with voting and registration. Um, it, it comes down to kind of a mission creep of big tech and big government. It's electronic 
registration of voting in our prisons, in our jails. That, you know, you know how it works in prison? It's like, okay, uh, if you vote for um, Trump, I'll give you a carton of cigarettes. Oh, no, it's going to cost you two cartons. There's no security. There, It's corrupt in the jails. You, you, you're opening up an, an opportunity for uh, incredible problems. I, I don't think it's a good idea to encourage voting in jail. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, broadcasting, is there anyone else on the phone lines? Yes, Chair. My name is Ellen Gifford. Nevada Administrative Code 293015 states in part, the Secretary of State will interpret the term polling place to mean any place that is designated by the county clerk for voting by personal appearance. This bill seeks to create exclusive polling places in the jails, only for jail people meaning that Nevada would have election polling places where law-abiding citizens would not be allowed to vote. Where in the statutes are exclusive polling places defined? Will the administrative code and the revised statutes have to undergo a major overhaul to address that term? Does this door, or excuse me, does this open the door to future other kinds of exclusive polling places? Section 2 of this bill addresses MRS 293274, which reads in part, the county clerk shall allow members of the general public to observe the conduct of voting at a, at a polling place. Section 2 seeks to leave what the county clerk shall do up to the decision of the person who administrates the jail. This bill also seeks to give jail people the ability to register to vote and vote on the same day. How will these exclusive jailed people be able to meet the requirements of either NRS 2935842 or NRS 2935847? This bill mandates the Secretary of State to perform what appears to be another overhaul of the administrative code to accommodate these requirements. How far will the new code deviate from what is required of law-abiding voters? Lastly, Assembly Bill 286, besides being verbatim in many cases to Senate Bill 162, provides for an election handbook for jail Miss, people Miss, I as apologize. well as Dropbox. We are at two minutes, so if you could wrap it up. I'm wrapping it up. I'm surprised that SB 162 left those out. But since Nevada law says there will be a drop box in every polling place, I have the same question. Will drop boxes at these jails exclusively for jailed persons, mail-in ballots, impact our administrative code, our revised statutes, and our ballot drop box security? Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Broadcasting, is there anyone else on the phone lines who wishes to speak in opposition to the measure? If you have just joined us, I would like to testify in opposition of SB 162, press star 9 to take your place in the queue now. One moment, Chair, there's one caller. Hi, my name is Justin Angelo. I'm calling in to oppose this bill. Um, I believe I, I just don't see the see the place in having additional polling places in in a spot where you might have somebody who, within after their adjudication of their crime, might not be eligible to vote. Um, I would say it, might, it may come from a sound harsh, but if someone has made a decision that would send them into uh, incarceration, then that might mean they need to sit an election out. So I oppose this bill, and I'm giving up my time from here. Thank you very much, sir. And I see someone down at the Sawyer Building. If you're in opposition, please state your name for the record and proceed. 
Good afternoon, and thank you, Chairman and Committee. My name is PJ Belanger, Patty for the record, P A T T Y B E L A N G E R. And I want to oppose this because for two reasons. Because, I mean, in Clark County, we already have an extreme problem with chain of custody. So, how um, in these ma- jails ma- would they have chain of custody? Oh, Miss, uh, just please, if you could and speak to the bill. Thank you. Speak to the bill. Thank you. Am I not on the bill? Yeah, you are on the bill. He doesn't. Please go ahead. Please continue. Please go ahead. Please continue. Okay, so uh, re- reclaiming my time, I um, uh, I don't see how we would have chain of custody in the jails, and also if you could consider if we don't have chain of custody, um, the other problem would also be uh, uh, um, observation. I mean, we're supposed to have voting observ- observers at all polls, so that would also be another problem to consider. Um, be- And it's unconstitutional. So um, hopefully you'll oppose for those reasons. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Belanger. Uh, Anyone else in opposition who didn't get a chance to speak? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone. I believe there are some more callers on the phone. So broadcasting, if we can go back to the phone lines. You have just joined us and would like to testify in opposition of SB 162. Press star nine to take your place in the queue. I had trouble testifying and getting through the phone lines went earlier in support. Is this a time when I can do that or is my time gone? Uh, well, we, we were in opposition, uh, but if you had trouble calling in, I please state your name for the record and you, you can go ahead and uh, we have two minutes. Please go ahead and state what you'd like to, to state. Please Thank state you. your name for the record. Thank you so much. Chair Orenshaw and members of the committee, my name is Linda Stout, a volunteer member of Sierra Club's Legislative Committee. On behalf of the club, the world's largest environmental volunteer organization, and our more than 30,000 members and supporters statewide, I'm speaking in support of SB 162. Access to voting is a prerequisite for a functional democracy. Prior to 2020, Nevada was ranked ninth for states with the most disenfranchised voters. Legislative efforts like mail-in voting in 2021 were successful in enfranchising many voters. We can still do better. Most individuals in jail are eligible to vote because they are not serving a sentence for a felony conviction, and nearly two-thirds are incarcerated in jail pretrial, sentenced to misdemeanor offenses or sentenced and awaiting transfer to a, a state prison. Nevada has been making efforts to establish polling places within city and county jails as well as detention and rehabilitation facilities. Codifying these efforts will ensure that eligible prisoners are enfranchised and have access to registration, pre-registration, absentee ballots, and polling sites. For these reasons, we urge you to support this bill. And thank you very much for letting me testify. Thank you. Uh, Broadcasting, are there any other callers who wish to be heard? Chair, there are no more calls wishing to testify in opposition at this time. Thank you. I'd now like to go to neutral. Anyone who's neutral on the measure, I'll start here in Carson City. Then we'll go down to the Sawyer Building. Then we'll go to the phone lines. Hello, committee. Ashley, sorry. I don't think your microphone's on. Please say your name for the record and proceed. Thank you, Chair. Ashley Garza-Kennedy representing Clark County here to testify in neutral with the bill as amended um, and appreciate the Senator for working on this bill. Um, currently, Clark County does have a process. We have um, our elect, uh, election workers, we have some liaisons that work with um, Clark County Detention Center so that those who are um, currently in our detention center who are eligible to vote and want to vote are able to do so via mail ballot. Um, so we uh, appreciate the flexibility this bill provides as far as letting us continue to do our processes and have that information available. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. 
Uh, Chair Orenshaw, members of the committee, Gabriel DeCara for the record, Chief Deputy Secretary of State. Um, I would like to thank Senator Scheibel for reaching out to our office and working with us on the, the process of um, having, having this bill brought forward. Um, as uh, Ms. Garza Kennedy said, uh, this is already happening in, in Clark County, and I would also just like to, um, I'd like to say that the Secretary of State's office will do whatever we can, uh, should this bill pass, to make sure that everything goes smoothly and efficiently. Um, and also, I would like to add that there's no evidence of any widespread voter fraud connected with jails or, or anything else here in the state of Nevada. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Deputy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair Orenshaw, Senate Committee on Legislative Operations and Elections. Uh, my name is Chris Reese. It's R-I-E-S. I uh, represent the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. I apologize. We, were, are, we are in support of SB 162, uh, if you don't mind. Thank you very much. Anyone else in neutral? Or you're, uh, Deputy Reese, you're in support. Okay, thank you. Then um, we'll go back to neutral down at the Sawyer Building. Yes, my name is Ed Euling, U-E-H-L-I-N-G. My first name is Ed. <clears throat> I have mixed feelings about this bill. Um, on, the, on the one hand, it's so absurd that uh, I'm actually in favor of having it passed uh, because uh, it will be of use to people in the future, uh, future elections. It's, it's so crazy. And, um, and so... Uh, um, in, in that way, I'm in favor of, the, of you passing it. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, do the, uh, do we, will separate precincts be set up in the, in the different centers? How will that, um, how will all that happen? And other objections have been raised to it. How, how will those be taken care of? Can you please, uh, enlighten us about those things? Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony, Mr. Mr. Ewing. Uh, now I'd like to go to the phone lines. Neutral, anyone who's neutral on the measure and wants to be heard. To testify neutral to SB 162, press star nine to take your place in the queue. Good evening, Chair and Committee. Uh, my name is Jamie Rodriguez. That's J-A-M-I-E-R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z. -E I am the Registrar of Voters for Washoe County. Um, calling in a neutral, want to thank Senator Scheibel for meeting with us and working with us. Um, as she did mention during her uh, presentation of the bill, we do already have a policy and, and a procedure in Washoe County here uh, where we work with our Sheriff's Office uh, for anybody who would like to vote um, to get their information, ensure that they are eligible, work on any efforts that need to be made um, to confirm their eligibility, uh, bringing ballots up to the sheriff's office, or sometimes they come get them from us, um, allowing those eligible voters to, in fact, cast their ballots. Um, and then through our chain of custody paperwork, those are brought back to uh, Washoe County. So we do have a policy and a procedure that works right now. Um, I think making that a, a, a uh, uh, regulation or, or a mandate throughout the state is, is something that's probably beneficial. Um, and this is something we do track really very closely. Um, in the 2022 general election, we had 10 uh, inmates who requested ballots who were eligible to receive ballots. When we only actually received eight back, uh, we followed up with the sheriff's office to make sure that we didn't need to send um, more chain of custody or, or a different um secured bag to get the, the remaining two ballots and were advised that the last two inmates who had received ballots had actually been released uh, before casting them. So uh, this is a really positive uh, program, uh, really very happy with the work that we've done with the Senate, with the sheriff's office and appreci appreciate Senator Scheibel's amendment um, that allows us to continue uh, with those processes and procedures that we already have in place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Broadcasting anyone else in the neutral position. Chair, the public line is open and working, but there are no more callers wishing to testify neutral at this time. Thank you very much. Senator Scheibel, we'd love to have you make some closing comments. Thank you. I'm sorry. Senator Krasner actually had a question for our legal counsel before closing comments. I'm so sorry, Senator Scheibel. Please Thank go ahead, you, Senator Chair. Krasner. Um, I just had a question for legal do persons who are temporarily detained in jail 
who are not convicted and otherwise eligible to vote, are they legally entitled to vote? Thank you, Senator, for the question. Uh, Jeff Coulomay, Deputy Legislative Counsel for the record. Um, instead of going off the top of my head, I would love to be able to give you a cleaner answer um, off the record or just get back to you, if that's all right or appropriate with the chair. That's completely fine. Thank you. Is that, Senator Krasner, can we get that back to you perhaps through an email? And could we share it with the whole committee? Certainly. Thank you very much, Mr. Coulomay. Thank you. And uh, Senator Scheibel, thank you so much. Thank you for the bill. And uh, please, any closing comments you'd like to make? Thank you, Chair Orenshaw. And, and I know that it is late. I do not want to keep you all long, but uh, the minutes live forever. So I want to make sure I make a few points clear uh, since we heard from the opposition. I think that um, most, if not all, of the concerns raised have been addressed in the amendment. Um, for one thing, we're not suggesting that anybody will be leaving a detention center to cast a ballot in um, a different polling place. And this should have very minimal, if any, cost uh, to the state because we're not requiring them to develop a new system for, uh, for bringing polling machines into detention centers and, and taking those ballots back. Um, we are simply asking them to put down on paper a policy that they already have in place or if they don't have one to develop one. And I'm so glad that Ms. Rodriguez called in for Washoe and shared with you that number. I didn't want to go off memory, but uh, like she said, there were 10 people in the Washoe County Detention Center last cycle who wanted to vote. Eight of them ended up casting ballots. And I think that speaks to the, um, the small number of people who are impacted, but they're an important number of people who are impacted. And so in smaller counties that may not have have an established system for this. We're not asking them to um, develop a, a process for hundreds of people to vote. We're talking about allowing one, two, three, a handful of people who happen to be in custody and want to cast a ballot to be able to cast that ballot. Um, and that brings me to my next point. Um, I know that a number of people mentioned that there are options, absentee ballots, mail ballots, absolutely. The, the purpose of the policy is to make sure that we know how people are going to cast those mail and absentee absentee ballots because it's one thing when you're at home and you fill it out at the kitchen table and you you close the envelope and you put it in the privacy sheath and you either put it in your mailbox or you drop it at a at a polling location if you're incarcerated you don't have those choices and so it falls to the staff at a correctional facility or at a detention facility to manage those logistics for that person who is incarcerated and so the purpose of this bill is to instead of saying well you know what we're going to mail them a ballot good luck hope it works out we're going to put a process in place who fills out the mail ballot? Or, you know, obviously the voter fills out the mail ballot. Who picks it up? Where do they take it? When do they take it there? Which brings me to my next point. Chain of custody is absolutely important. And you heard from a couple of different government agencies that they have slightly different processes. In Clark County, the election department has liaisons who go to the jail and um, they process ballots in one way. And you heard from Washoe County that they have their own system where they utilize a secure bag to transfer ballots back and forth. And so the purpose of having a policy in place is to ensure that every county, every municipality, every jurisdiction has its own best way of ensuring the chain of custody. Because, um, and this is something I experienced in talking with our law enforcement partners. Some of them were perfectly comfortable with being part of the chain of custody, were happy to take a mail ballot, have um, a person from the sheriff's office drive it down to um, the location where ballots are being counted. Others were not comfortable with that. And so what we're asking counties to do or what we're asking officials to do is to have that conversation before election day comes around. Is it going to be a corrections officer who's going to take the ballot and sign for it and drive it down to the to the registrar of voters to be counted? Or are you going to send somebody from the registrar of voters office down to the jail to pick it up from the jail and take it back with them and they're going to have to sign for it? Or, or is it something else? Just have that process in place before it comes up. And that I think finally um, leads to the, the last two things that I, I want to make sure that we understand. Um, and the first one is that 
this is not creating a new polling place. Um, I understand that polling place was used in the original language of the bill, and from a legal standpoint, that was problematic because polling places have very specific definitions and they come with certain rights and responsibilities that just don't make sense when you're talking about a jail. So I was happy to amend the bill to reflect more accurate language that there is a voting process as opposed to a polling place. Just like when we get our mail ballots that doesn't turn all of our homes into polling places. There are ways to vote without going to a polling place. Just like when we send out absentee ballots to um, our veterans or our mil act active duty military who are overseas, we don't create polling places for them. We create another avenue for them to vote. And that's the same thing that we're doing here. Um, so I appreciate concerns about creating polling places in detention centers, and that's probably at this point, at least, that, that is not the, the way to approach the question of getting a few people to be able to cast a ballot. And so finally, I want to say that I appreciate that there has to be public trust in our elections, and our elections do have to be run um, in an open and fair and democratic manner. And I believe, truly, I believe that this bill should help to increase public trust. Because you heard that all of the detention centers in the state are already doing this, but we don't know how. And so this provides a mechanism for a centralized authority, the Secretary of State, whose office came in here and testified that they are happy to, they're neutral on the bill, they will work to implement this as necessary, it's not going to create some great undue burden on them. They are willing to be the repository for these policies so that we know that all of these jurisdictions that are allowing people already to vote while they are in custody will now have a policy for doing so. And so I think that, you know, given that people are already voting from jails and detention centers, everybody should be supportive of codifying that, regulating it, making it official, and determining that we have a place to go to find the policy on how they're doing it. And then if there are questions in the future, that will allow us to go back to the policy. If there's a particular place where we think that somebody cast a fraudulent ballot from a jail or a detention center, we'll be able to pull up that jail or detention center's policy. We'll be able to ask whether or not they followed it and determine whether or not election fraud is occurring. And so I think that um, creating guidelines and ensuring that this process is more public and ensuring that every county, every municipality, every detention center, all of these governmental agencies have the conversation before a problem arises is something that shouldn't be partisan. It's something that we should all support doing to ensure that every eligible Nevadan can cast a vote in every election. Senator Scheibel, thank you so much for presenting this bill. Thank you for your comments and uh, I, Certainly, I, I think that uh, to try to keep someone who's a qualified elector from being able to vote or having obstacles in front of them, even if it's you know, pending charges and their inability to post a bail bond, I think this bill will really help provide more information to the secretary and for us to move forward. So thank you for your presentation. Thanks for joining us tonight. With that, we will close this hearing and we will move to our two hearings on SB, we have SB 404 and SB 443. And I'll hand the gavel over to Vice Chair Daly, unless members want to break or to proceed on. What's the? I just need to get a key back. Okay. Okay. okay, proceed on, then I'll hand the gavel over to you, and thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and open the hearing on Senate Bill 404, so please proceed. Welcome, Senator. Thank you, Vice Chair Daly. And if I could ask one question before I begin, James Orangehall, State Senate District 21, is our Zoom connection on? Because we do have someone who's appearing via Zoom. And if we could just check on that and... Well, I'm assuming someone's going to do that. I don't... It's on? Okay, the Zoom connection is on.
Vice Chair Daly, members of the committee, thank you for your indulgence at this late hour to hear Senate Bill 404. As I stated earlier, James Orenshaw represents State Senate District 21 in Clark County. According to a Pew Research study survey conducted in 2020, approximately 62% of registered voters in the United States consider voting to be a civic duty. This finding underscores the importance many Americans place on the act of voting and its role in preserving democracy in this, our nation. It also leads us into the discussion today, which is the fundamental premise upon which this bill is intended. During the pandemic, we saw how important the right to vote truly is. We also saw the need for government to be flexible and adaptable to allow people to continue to exercise their voice and their vote. We also know the importance and hear the concerns of all perspectives when it comes to elections. That's why this bill is before you today. Vice Chair Daly, members of the committee, I would ask you direct you to the amendment that should be on Nellis. If not, there should be, if you don't find it on Nellis, there should be hard copies here at the beginning of the room. And then I'd like to turn it over uh, to my co-presenters uh, here and via Zoom, then I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, and they just uh, gave me a note that says Ms. Knott is available by Zoom when you're ready. So whenever you're ready, but uh, please well, proceed. If we could start with Ms. Knott via Zoom, Mr. Vice Chair, thank you. Hi, my name is Letha Knott. I'm a senior legal counsel at the Campaign Legal Center uh, Action Fund. And um, I wanted to talk about a couple of provisions in this bill that um, are there to provide proper guardrails in um, the process of challenging the eligibility of individual voters. Um, in 2020, uh, we saw partisan actors in states like Florida, Texas, and Michigan use the voter challenge process as a tool to intimidate or harass voters using frivolous accusations. And this bill would mitigate the risk of bad actors being able to use Nevada's challenge process in this manner by clarifying certain aspects of it and applying safeguards to protect eligible voters. Current law says that if a voter is challenged based on allegations that they do not reside at the address listed on the roster, the voter may only vote a regular ballot if they execute an oath that says that they actually do reside at that address and if they show satisfactory identification that proves that's true. But the law doesn't define what satisfactory identification is beyond stating that a voter registration card is not sufficient. And this creates confusion and uncertainty for challenged voters, as well as the election officers who have to adjudicate these challenges. Um, so sections five and 27 of this bill clarify what satisfactory identification actually is, that it includes, but it's not limited to um, a current and valid, valid Nevada driver's license or ID card, military ID, tribal ID, utility bills, bank statements, um, and a number of other documents that are issued by government agencies that, are, that can be taken as proof of residency. So these sections, um, not only do they clarify how a challenge voter can defend themselves if they are challenged, uh, they also allow provisional ballots to be given to challenge voters who have made oaths under perjury uh, that their address or their identity is what they say it is, but cannot immediately produce satisfactory identification to defeat those challenges. Um, this ensures that a voter will not be disenfranchised simply because they were not expecting a challenge to their eligibility and just don't happen to have the right evidence on hand. And finally, these sections, they serve to eliminate any confusion surrounding challenges to mail ballots by clarifying the currently accepted process that mail ballots can't be challenged. And all of this serves to clarify how the challenge process works and, and to make sure that voters, eligible voters, are not deprived of their right to vote or not disenfranchised um, simply because uh, a frivolous challenge was, was levied against them. Um, and I will pass it to uh, my colleague Isaac to talk about early ballot processing. Hi, committee. Isaac Torrio with Strategies 60, today representing Campaign Legal Center Action Fund. So during the 2020 election cycle, as I mentioned previously, partisan actors uh, in several states used de uh, delays in processing and tabulating ballots to convince supporters that the results were fraudulent. Uh, we saw these same arguments being made in Nevada to question the validity of the election here in our state. Um, SB 404 addresses both of these risks uh, by explicitly, st explicitly stating that canvassing and certification are non-discretionary duties that election officials can are compared to form in a timely manner. Those bills then ensures that election officials 
um, can take advantage of counting early and it's at the discretion of the county clerks to allow them to begin processing early ballots during the early voting period. This bill will prevent unnecessary delays in results from undermining the confidence in Nevada's election. Um, the section eight and section 28 um, state that no later than the first day of early voting, the city clerk may order the appropriate board to begin count of the returns of early voting. So this gives a little bit of wiggle room for the county clerks to start counting the, the tablets early and um, ensure that uh, we get results quicker, which is something that Nevada came in under a lot of scrutiny during the 2020 election cycle. Um, in conclusion, um, SB 404 would be a substantial victory, not just for hardworking election administrators that manage this complex process, but it'd also be a victory for Nevada voters. Vice Chair Daley, uh, Minority Leader Severs Gansard, and Senator Kranzer, Krasner, uh, we thank you for your time and we urge for your support on this bill. Thank you. Vice Chair Daley, members of the committee, I'm happy to answer any questions. Very good, thank you. Uh, members, any questions? I have a couple, because I always do. <laughs> so my, my first question is in uh, section two, uh, which I didn't see any changes in your amendment. Uh, and if I read it correctly, the governor or the secretary of state may reschedule a primary or state polls to stay open later. Uh, so my, my question was, what if they give conflicting orders, right? Or one of them says one, one of them says no, the other says yes. Um, so maybe language something along the lines of whichever is least restrictive would settle that argument, uh, but I don't know how you planned on handling that. Vice Chair Daley, I wanted to let you know and I direct you to the amendment. I believe that section of the bill, that's deleted in the amendment, and hopefully that's clear in the amendment, but that section is deleted in the amendment. Thank you. I, it, I didn't see that. That's what I was looking it, for. Maybe the amendment's not clear enough, but I'm yeah. just checking uh, to make sure it's... It's okay if it's deleted. Bullet that six. answers that question. Bullet six. Yeah. Thank you. Bullet six. Thank you. Uh, Isaac Torrio, for the record. Uh, it is bullet six on the amendment. I think I saw the answers to my other questions uh, in in the amendment, but in case I missed it, on the automatic recount, is that stuff still in there or is that going away as well? Uh, Isaac Tarnier, for the record, that is also have been deleted in the new amendment. Okay. And I think uh, all of the other questions I had were answered, so. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. So I was looking first, the amendment guts a lot of this bill, but it's very difficult to tell because there's not, a, it's a conceptual amendment or maybe it's not uh, like written out, right? It's just like delete this, delete that. It's kind of hard to tell. So a couple things. First of all, when I looked at the list of um, documents that would be satisfactory for identification, you have the driver's license and IDs, right? And you've got military ID card and tribal, but then you go to a utility bill, a bank or credit union statement, a paycheck, but none of those are like ands, they're all ors. So you can show up with a utility bill and that satisfies the standard for um, residency. Is that accurate? I'm not sure if anyone can hear me, but that is accurate and that is, um, since the uh, at that point it is about proving residency for the challenger like any, any document not limited to what's on the list but uh there these are examples of what would be a satisfactory document to prov prove residency right and utility bills don't have any um photos right so the, a lot of these things that you've got listed here do not have photos income tax return 
statement of your mortgage, motor vehicle registration, mm -hmm. property tax, and also people move a lot. So I, I guess um, I, I have an issue with that. It seems like a very low standard. And then I was also looking about, there's a, I don't know if this is still in the bill or not, section 21, six, the decision of the House in a contest of general election for the Office of Assemblyman, Assemblywoman, or Senator is not appealable. I don't really understand what that's applicable to, where it is. Section 21, and maybe you delivered I, that too. Section I believe two. that sorry, I believe that actually has been taken out of the bill, but um, yes, that's that is no longer a part of the bill. Um, but to your earlier question, uh, the the documents that are listed are documents uh, to defend against challenge to residency, not identity. So the fact that uh, many of them don't have have photographs included. The challenge is that isn't that the voter isn't who they say they are. The challenge is that the voter does not reside at the place that is listed as their address on the rolls. And hence why a utility bill would be sufficient proof of that. Um, thank you. And you know, and just thinking about utility bills, it, it doesn't actually specify that it has to be a recent utility bill. It doesn't really, there's no, um, no details around any of these items that are not photo ID. So anyway, that's fine. I just have, a, I, I, that's an issue for me in this bill because it's very non-specific in general and there's no time frame within which any of this had to be um, provided, not provided to the individual who's checking the, the, the uh, registration or the, the uh, residency, but um, you could have a bill from prior times. I'm looking at that, thank you. And uh, James Orange, I'll send a 21 through you, Vice Chair, to Senator Severs Gansert. I, I, I think I understand your concern, and uh, maybe that's something we could still look at. But I, I think that uh, certainly, I think as to a residency challenge, as to you know, someone says you know, Mr. Smith or Ms. Jones doesn't live at 39 Sycamore anymore. I think that a lot of these kind of statements would go to prove that you still do live there and you're qualified to vote in that precinct. Committee, any additional questions? Seeing none, we'll uh, go ahead and let you guys step back and we will take testimony in support of Senate Bill 404. Okay, seeing none in Carson, anybody down south? In support, seeing none, uh, BPS uh, broadcasting, and do we have somebody on the phone? Anybody on the phones in support of Senate Bill 404? To testify in support of SB 404, press star nine to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers wishing to testify in support at this time. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll move to anyone in opposition, uh, either in Las Vegas or Carson City. Come on up if you, we'll get them going. We'll start in Las Vegas. Please state your name for the record and proceed. Katrin Ivanov, I-V-A-N-O-F-F, -F, Assembly District 42, Senate District 9, and uh, I'm in, in very strong opposition. Oh, AKA Mrs. Fixit, that's important. Uh, I am in a very strong opposition of this bill. There have been three great world pandemics of plague recorded in 541, 1347, and 1894, each time causing devastating mortality to people and animals across nations in continents. Our constitution was written in 1787. Why do I give you that history lesson? To show you that the creators of the constitution and the Bill of Rights were very aware of the pandemics, yet they chose not to make exceptions for our constitutional rights during pandemics. According to our constitution, the state legislators are the only body that is a, allowed to make any changes to the voting laws. This bill starts with uh, trying to give the governor special rights during pandemics to, do, to change the voting laws. 
this is unconstitutional. I honestly uh, didn't have time to read the whole bill. It's a pretty lengthy bill. I just read the first several sentences and this is what it's in the first several sentences. I can only imagine what other atrocity is in the rest of the bill. I am very strongly opposing this bill. Please start respecting our constitutional rights. Stop delegating your job. Your job is to deal with voting laws, not the governor's. And also stop trying to take power from the local elected officials and transferring it to yourself. Just please follow the constitution. Thank you. And I know you're trying your best. So thank you and have a lovely day. Thank you for your testimony. Next speaker. Um, yes, thank you, sir. My name is Leslie Quinn, L-E-S-L-I-E-Q-U-I-N-N. I oppose SB 404. Um, why can't we just keep voting simple and make it on one day with ID and paper ballot? Um, some of the items inside of here, like the uh, uh, Senator Gansett was mentioning, um, just showing a bill. I mean, people can... Uh, anybody can get a, a bill as long as they're paying for it, and that doesn't mean they're a registered voter um, or they're a U.S. citizen, and those uh, those are the only people that should be voting, right? U.S. citizens. Um, it, it brings to mind the KISS acronym. Keep it sim super simple. Um, this also infringes on our First Amendment right to petition the government, um, and we're not able to. Once you put this in place, it's put in place. Um, just want to share this thought that I have with you guys. If a government is powerful enough to give people everything they want, it is also power no powerful enough to take from the people everything they've got. You cannot have one without the other. If collect even if collectivism were not morally wrong, we would still oppose it because freedom is more important than prosperity. Freedom is more important than prosperity. Please remember that as legislators, that you're there to serve the people in uh, your constituents and I definitely oppose SB 404, and I hope all of you will as well. We all live on the same planet and do what's best and right for Nevadans. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. And I'm also to Joe Gloria for the right for meaningful observation of the election process. Uh, from start to finish, and we won, yet those laws were not adhered to. The state and federal laws were not. And this I am opposed to because it also breaks state and federal laws. It's a, a bit troubling, too, because it, it looks like you all are discriminating against voters here. I mean, um, first of all, this is poorly written. It's hard to understand. It's contradictory. It gives the governor the right to change laws when that is not okay. Um, and why on earth would you make doxing an official in an election uh, facility a felony when you don't even keep murderers in jail, and they were not the ones that were abused. There is documentation at OSHA of the abuse that I experienced at the hands of a forklift operator who ran me down with a load of tables and shoved them within six inches of my toes, and I wasn't alone. There was two other people there. There were plenty of witnesses, and nothing happened to them, but are, my are gosh, we, we you give somebody's bill? phone stick, number, stick and they're the going to be in trouble? Stick to the bill. I am speaking to the bill. I would like my time back okay right. I need you all to right stick to the so bill. if you know what you're rude thank you. <laughs> please proceed uh c c y r u s h o j j a t y i will ditto the previous and future speakers Man, I, I love this. Yield. Thank you. Please proceed. Next speaker. Good afternoon, Chairman and Committee. My name is PJ Belanger, legally Patty, P A T T Y B E L A N G E R. Um, this is so frustrating. It's like almost hard to even conceive how to speak in a manner that will get you guys' attention. Um, 
But the the <laughs> fact that we would take that we would go completely against our constitution, which happens to be, I guess, the the, the wave of the future. Um, I get they're really trying to get rid of the constitution, is what I'm seeing lately. But to give one man a, the governor who already has so much powers. I mean, the man's even over OSHA now. I mean, it's not a party thing. It doesn't matter what party he is in. But to give one man all this power is absolutely unconstitutional and should 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 be stricken. If you, I mean, if you're going to not listen to us and pass it anyway, please at least amend that the governor isn't the one getting all the power. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other speakers in Las Vegas, we'll come up here to Carson City. Mr. Vice Chairman and members of the committee, Michael Lobby, last name is spelled L-A-B as in boy, I-T. The state of Nevada has a perception problem with elections. Uh, the average person just, just does not trust our elections. It says in good, the issue is not whether the elections are fair or not, but rather it's the perception. That's the real issue. This bill has many different parts to it. One part deals with the uh, unfortunate things that happen to our election officials. They're being attacked. Uh, their personal information given to other, you know, put, put out widely. And I think that particular part of this bill has been taken care of by this committee when you passed uh, SB 406 a few minutes ago. But if this bill is passed, I do think that it will further weaken the perception of Nevada elections. Uh, it calls for the start of counting of ballots mailed in on the first day of early voting. This is where a real issue is. We have a real problem, and I really strongly suggest that the committee consider changing by an amendment if you want to pass this bill, amend it so that the ballot signature and the ballot itself is tracked by the Secretary of State through an, a, some way of tagging those two together. Because the way our current system is set up, when that ballot is separated from the signature, it goes into the system and it is counted. And by this bill, it would be counted the first day. My concern is from the voter, the legal voter, that comes in later and is disenfranchised by our system. In 2020, uh, I spoke to 35 people on the phone that that happened to them. They showed up to vote and they were told, you have, your vote has already been cast. And they were disenfranchised. Brett, later, that Brett, same- Brett, our two minutes, if you can wrap up. Okay. And if you have more in writing, you can submit that to the Secretary. Okay. When taken together, the whole bill, the way it stands right now, it's going to take one of the most vulnerable areas and places a screen around the election officials so that they cannot be questioned and our elections remain closed to oversight by other people. This is going to be really bad press coming forward. I don't think we want to have that type of press to, that really destroys the credibility of our election system, and that's where I'm standing on it. So thank you all very much for the time. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chair, members of the committee, my name is Janine Hansen. I'm the state president of Nevada Families for Freedom. We appreciate the amendments on this bill because they took care of many of our concerns and problems. I do appreciate what Senator Seaver Severs Gansert said as well. We are concerned about that. But we are concerned about what's left in the bill. No later than the first day of early voting, the county clerk, and it also includes later on the city clerk, may order the appropriate board to begin count of the returns for early voting. I think this is open, uh, and we're very concerned about it, because if anyone got a hold of that particular information, it could change the election entirely because they might change their campaign, they might do other work that would be significant in changing the uh, ending ballot. So we don't want any, uh, any early counting of the ballots. We want them all on after the election day, uh, on the evening of election day. We know we are all concerned about the election taking so long, the process, but this does not improve our concerns 
about how elections are conducted and would increase people's perception that there might be fraud. And we certainly don't want them to feel that way. And although it's good intentions of speeding up the elections, we are very concerned about what the ultimate um, feeling of the public and how this would turn out because it could be used in an inappropriate way. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you. Uh, any other people in person here in Carson City? Seeing none. Rod Gass, can we go to the phones, please? You testify in support of SB 404, press star agree. 9 to take your place in opposition. We were in opposition. Sorry, Chair, to testify in opposition to SB 404, press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Good evening, Vice Chair and Committee. My name is Jim DeGraffenried. I'm Nevada's Republican National Committee man in opposition to SB 404 on behalf of the Nevada Republican Party. As all Nevadans know who suffered under the tyrannical policies of Steve Sisolak during his mishandling of the pandemic, if we allow the government to break the law due to an emergency, officials will exploit an emergency to break the law whenever it suits them. You, you we please, understand please that the stop. emergency power to the may bill. be removed by amendment. Please speak to the bill. I don't want to hear denigrations of former public officials. I'm not going to hear it. So speak to the bill or we'll cut you off. Maybe. Maybe removed by amendment, but the amendment is so extensive and incomplete as to make this lengthy bill unfit for review at this point. The 54 page bill as originally introduced covered a radical increase in emergency powers, creation of new emergency powers for the Secretary of State, changing the rules on recounts, allowing arbitrary poll hours, making it more difficult to challenge voters making our already loose election audits meaningless and changing the burden of proof in court. There are a number of positive amendments proposed that would address many of these issues, and if they're adopted, and we support these amendments. However, one of the major changes to election law remaining in the bill would allow early tabulation of results starting from the first day of early voting, as well as removing language the ballots be counted in view of the public. While ballots can be processed prior to election day, results cannot be tabulated until that day. The objective of every election bill should be to increase voter confidence in the system. Under the current system, we've increased access at the expense of confidence in the election system, and most of the election bills that you're allowing hearings on, including this one, reduce transparency and confidence. Early tabulation of results further erodes the transparency, which has been under attack for years in Nevada. As often seen in the observer principle, once someone knows the outcome, it alters what and how they measure. Anything that increases the amount of ballots processed behind closed doors increases distrust in the system. Every election bill should be an attempt to increase transparency and to restore trust to our broken election system in Nevada. This bill does not do that, and for those reasons, we ask you to not support SB 404. Thank you. Uh, broadcast, next caller. Good evening. This is Lynn Chapman, and I'm the state treasurer of the Independent American Party. This is food for thought. Um, this has to do with the utility bills that Senator Gansert had brought up. Back in um, 2008, before the primary, I noticed I wasn't receiving my utility bill. And when I called the utility company, they told me I had called in and changed my address to Silver um, Springs. And, of course, I didn't. I got that all straightened out. But when my daughter got home from the grocery store where she uh, worked in non-foods, taking in bills, um, she told me that, that sto their store had received at least 50 people coming in saying the same thing had happened to them. Uh, and so this is food for thought. What is going on if you're bringing in a utility bill that you've called up the utility company and had somebody else's bill sent to your house so you can prove, you know, hey, here's, here's where I live now, blah, blah, and I can vote. This is a problem. Uh, I remember I brought it to the state legislature in 2009, and Senator Raggio was very concerned with what I had to tell him. This, this has happened before. I'm sure it's happened since. Uh, so it's just food for thought. Um, I don't think bringing in a bill with no other ID would, uh, is a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Broadcasting, next caller. My name is Ellen Gifford. 
In the short amount of time given, I've tried to formulate a knowledgeable opinion of SB 404, but unfortunately, there is no sensible order to this bill at all. It is a hodgepodge of a bill that covers unrelated topics, from the governor's authority in disasters to counting the ballots at the right, at the right time of day to offending elections officials to holding a polling place open past the allotted time for all polling places. This bill appears to be an attempt to reinvent Nevada's entire election process in one bill. The bill was just introduced March 27th. The proposed amendments aren't even formally dated so that we have some idea when they were developed and what might have influenced them. The legislators and the people need time to understand a bill like this, as well as the amendments, before anyone could ever vote on it. I oppose SB 404. Thank you. Uh, broadcasting, next caller. Hi, my name is Jessica Ansel, uh, A-N-C-E-L-L, -L, for the record, and I oppose um, SB 404. You can have the rest of my time. Thank you. Broadcasting? Thank you to the vice chair and members of the committee. My name is Alita Benson, executive director of the Nevada Republican Party, testifying in opposition to SB 404 on behalf of the Nevada Republican Party. To add to the excellent testimony already given to the committee by Jim DeGrasse Reed, it is worth noting that section 5.10 ignores the fact that Clark County sent over 80,000 ballots to addresses they knew were incorrect in 2020. There should absolutely be the right to challenge any voter who votes by mail from an invalid or non-existent address per the processes laid out in NRS 293.303. For this reason and the reasons already given, please vote no on SB 404. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Well, I again had no chance to, when I called in, something went wrong. So I'm voting or in, I'm placing an uh um in support. Can I do that now? Yes, go ahead. Please proceed. Yes? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Chair Orenthal and members of the committee, my name is Linda Stout, L-I-N-D-A-S-T-O-U-T, a volunteer member of the Sierra Club's Legislative Committee and a 30-year resident of Nevada. On behalf of the club, the world's largest environmental volunteer organization, and our more than 30,000 members and supporters statewide, I am speaking in support of SB 404. The Sierra Club supports and promotes democracy and free and fair elections. SB 404 provides language to help ensure the safety of our election officials. It extends voting days and times in case of a natural disaster. We've had lots of those or an emergency, uh, provides processes for challenging ballots, for challenged ballots, allows counting of early votes to begin after the first day of early voting, and clarifies when a result can be challenged, by whom, and in what time frame. All of these proposed measures are intended to make our elections safer, more accurate, and provide faster results. We live in a time of political strife, and violence in America. Nevada has a history of safe, secure, accessible elections. These proposed measures should help Nevada continue to be one of the best places to vote in America. For these reasons, we urge you to support this bill. And thank you again for letting me speak during this time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, broadcasting, uh, any other callers in opposition? If you have just joined us and would like to testify in opposition of SB 404, press star nine to take your place in the queue now. Chair, there are no more callers wishing to testify in opposition at this time. Okay, uh, thank you, broadcasting. Let's go to neutral. We'll stay on the phones. 
There are people in the, on the call. We, we have people on the call. I don't know why you're not getting them. We have, is that uh, in opposition? In opposition? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, there's there's people who are in opposition on the, phone. on the phones. Yeah, just tell them to press star nine. Yes. Thank she you. said she hit star nine, but nobody let her in. Uh, it cut, happened to cut, me before. Cut, cut. cut the mics off down in Vegas for a moment, please. Um, be broadcasting, do we have any other callers on the line in opposition? Thus define opposition of SB 404. Press star nine to take your place in the queue now. Hello, my name is Christiane Mersh. Uh, last name is M E R S C H, representing Battleborn Republican Women Club. I'm in opposition of this bill. Uh, as an immigrant myself, I feel I feel that is an insult for us that came through a big process here in Nevada and to have our voter ID and vote with conscience. I think that just people that are here and working, paying taxes and are producing for our society should get access to vote. Please read your regulation, respect what the people of Nevada really want for uh, election integrity. Thank you and I hope you vote no. Broadcasting, next caller. Chair Derrick. Bye, it's time. Broadcasting. Chair, there are no more callers. We should testify at this time. Okay, if we we'll stay on the phones and go to neutral, then please. To testify neutral to SB 404, press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Again, to testify neutral to SB 404, press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Uh, good evening, uh, Vice Chair Daly and Committee, uh, Jamie Rodriguez, J-A-M-I-E-R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z, um, calling in neutral on the amended version of SB 404 presented to you this evening. Um, really appreciate the work of the proponents um, in, in many of the sections that were um, deleted from the bill that we had originally had some concerns with um, to get us to a point of, of um, neutral on the bill and the changes relating to um, the counting, as well as uh, the, the challenge provisions for voters. Um, so I just really want to thank the proponents for working with us to address those concerns. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez, if I can ask a question real quick. Sorry, Chair, I moved on. Would you like me to bring her back? She Is she not no longer there? She's still on a call, but she's uh, she's queued to the next person. He's not available for questions. All right, so next caller, please. Senator, this is uh, Jamie again. You had a question? I did. Thank you. I'm glad glad we got you. So just one question based on some of the uh, opposition that we heard regarding the um, early uh, counting provisions that are in there. And I know people have been upset because it takes so long to get that, and part of the delay is not being able to count the mail-in ballots that come in. Um, so if with this pr provision, all of the counting uh, safeguards and measures and all of those things, no um, uh, results or anything are going to be disclosed. So all of the same processes and steps would be in place 
you would just be able to have the results earlier because you wouldn't have to wait until uh, election day to start counting. Is that, uh, is that fair to say? Uh, thank you, Senator Jamie Rodriguez, for the record. Yes, that's correct. So it allows us to the, the processing um, of the, the ballot, the actual tabulation or the calculation of results. Um, this does not change that provision, so we would still not be able to do that um, or release any results until we get the um, all clear from the Secretary of State's office that all voting in the state has ended um, before we'd be able to release any of the preliminary results. So that, that does not... The, uh, the amendment in the bill um, does not change that provision. And then f second question on that. So um, obviously if people wanted to have uh, observers during that uh, time, you would, would that be allowed still? Absolutely. Um, as long as, sorry, Jamie Rodriguez for the record. Um, so long as we are in the office and, and working, then physical observation is allowed within Washoe County. Um, so if we are in the office counting, uh, working, or, or processing ballots, um, observation is open to the public. Thank you. Broadcasting out of your call is in neutral. Yes, Chair, one moment. Hi, my name is Valerie Tilson. Hello, Vice uh, Chairman. Um, I um, was one of the original workers back in the day when Galena High School was the pilot program for electronic voting. Um, I wanted to just um, say that that program was really well run. The only issue was verifying signatures and trying to get through um, for any discrepancies which towards crunch time got chaotic because he couldn't get through to the right people to and reassure the voters that they were going to be able to submit their ballot on on time and or they at that time they had to go to a different location because of their polling place um i just wanted to make sure that there was you know provisions i know washer county was talking about a backdoor policy if dominion there was issues because we had printing issues on the ballots so i want to make sure there's security uh set in place that the voters don't say well due to a printer issue we're having a, a more narrow time to get the sample ballot out absentee ballot um and other provisions for out of area uh, eligible voters. So I'm in this, I'm seeing neutral on this position. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Broadcasting, any other callers? Sure, the public line is opening working, but there are no, no more callers at this time. Thank you. Uh, do we have anybody in neutral in Carson City or in Las Vegas? We'll, I see a gentleman in Las Vegas. We'll start down there. I'm not in neutral. I'm against this. Can I still t say something? Uh, we, 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 finished, uh, we finished opposition, uh, opposition person well, testimony I, a long time ago. So, long time ago. You let neutral up here in Carson <laughs> City. You're biased. How biased is that? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what? Blatantly. Blatantly biased. You've been letting people go, hey. letting people go. I've been very lenient with you guys. You won't do it again. I don't want Need you to turn off your microphone in Clark County, please. Please proceed in Carson. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Daly. Gabriel DeCara, for the record, Chief Deputy Secretary of State. I would like to thank Chair Orenshaw and, and the uh, other advocates of this bill for working with our office and, and working off of our input. Um, also, Senator Severs Gansert, to your question around the um, the. Uh, uh, bills, utility bills, et cetera. Thank you to Deputy uh, Mark Vlashin, our, our Deputy Secretary for Elections, um, who is a subject matter expert. Um, he clarified, so currently in Nevada Administrative Code, there is language uh, for, because you can use a utility bill for proof of, of residency currently, and that, uh, so there is NAC that qualifies current and valid. And so we would, uh, we would likely model that same administrative code for this new provision as well. So that bill must be current, current and valid.
Okay, thank you. And uh, to anybody else down in uh, Las Vegas, if you missed the time in opposition, if you have something you want to submit in writing, we'll accept that. It'll go into the record. We're not taking further testimony. We, we passed that. Um, Senator Orenshaw, if you want to come up and give any closing remarks. Thank you, Vice Chair. Thank you, members of the committee, for hearing uh, the measure. And uh, certainly, I appreciate the reference to the administrative code that uh, the Chief Deputy Secretary of State made. Additionally, uh, certainly looking at the current language in 293.303 was one of the concerns my colleague, Senator Severs Gansert, brought up. The, the language here that would allow a utility bill, some other items like that, to uh, be added has to do with a challenge as to residency. That's NRS 293.303. That's the situation where someone goes in at the polling place, someone says, oh, there, that's James Orenshaw. He doesn't live at 39 Sycamore anymore. He doesn't live in our precinct. If there's a challenge as to identity, that's 293.3 sub E, someone's saying, that's not James Orenshaw. I've known him all my life. That still requires photo identification under 293.3 sub 8, so that doesn't change. If there's a challenge based on the identity that someone is trying to pretend they're someone that they're not, that still requires photo ID. But if someone is challenging your address, residency, that you live in that precinct and you're qualified to vote, that is where we would allow the utility bill and some of the other things that were listed in the proposed amendment. So I just wanted to clarify that. Again, the, as to the change in the counting of the ballots, 293.3606, there's no change to the part of that statute, 293.3606 sub 2. The returns for early voting must not be reported until after the polls have closed on election day. The secrecy of the count would still remain secret till after election day. This would just give registrars and county clerks a head start on that tabulation um, and perhaps help us not be so behind uh, as we've heard a lot of people be frustrated about, about hearing the results. So with that, I believe that this will improve uh, a lot of the, the issues that we've had with voting, and, and if I could just give Dr. Tenorio and our, our subject matter expert on Zoom a little time to make some closing comments, Vice Chair. Committee, thank you for your time. We appreciate uh, the feedback, and hopefully we address uh, your concerns, and have a good night. We know it's a long night uh, these last couple of nights, so we appreciate it. I'm not sure if Lata is still on the Zoom or not, but oh, thank you. It's still on. Um, committee, thank you so much for your time. Um, I know this is a complicated, it's a long bill with a lot of amendments, so it, it's sort of hard to see what's left in and what isn't. But what is in the bill now, which is uh, these allowance of, uh, of clerks to start counting early ballots as they receive them, which is a practice that is, is common in, in many other states and helps to expedite results. Um, we hope you can support that as well as uh, these clarifications to uh, to how voter challenges uh, should be adjudicated and dealt with and what kind of evidence is sufficient. And really do appreciate the clarification about uh, the how a utility bill is defined uh, in in the administrative code. Uh, but I will say that without uh, this language that we're adding, which, um, there, there are no specifics about what kind of evidence is is necessary to prove one's residency, and we think it's important for both like election judges and voters to have that certainty about how they can prove their where, that they live where they say they live, because right now the law is silent on it. But thank you so much for your time, and we truly do believe this will improve uh, election administration in Nevada. Thank you, Vice Chair. Thank you, Committee. Thank you, and with that, we'll close the hearing on Senate Bill 404, and and we'll open the hearing on Senate Bill 443. Is that correct? That's correct, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. I do believe I'm my co-presenter should be joining us momentarily. If I could indulge, oh, she's here. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed when you're ready.
Vice Chair Daly, members of the committee, James Orange Hall State Senate District 21. And I've had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, very cool things this session. And one of the coolest is getting to work with my neighbor and my friend and my constituent, <laughs> Emily Prasad Zamora, on Senate Bill 443. As you're all familiar, uh, elections and the right to vote are critical to our Republican form of government and our democracy, and they represent the core foundations of our free society. With that said, the measure before you today is brought forward with the intent to continue to provide access to voting for all the citizens of our great state. With your permission, Vice Chair, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Prasad Zamora, and then I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, good evening. For the record, my name is Emily Prasad Zamora, and that is spelled P-E-R-S-A-U-D hyphen Z-A-M-O-R-A. -A. Um, first, I am a constituent of Senate District 21, um, but my day job is being the executive director of Silver State Voices, and we also lead the Latin Nevadans Vote Coalition. Today, I'm here to co-present Senate Bill 443. I'd like to thank Senator Orrin Shaw for this opportunity and for listening to our overall concerns. Um, I do have to say really quickly um, that I, my son, William, is watching. He's eight years old. Um, and so I just wanted to say hi. Um, and if he's on his best behavior, he will get to go watch Super Mario this weekend. Uh, <laughs> Um, but today we're excited to present this legislation because it updates one of our favorite policies, same-day voter registration, commonly referred to as SDR, and for the sake of this presentation, I will continue to refer to it as SDR. My computer's acting a little crazy. Okay, um, I'll start by giving you all some context on what same-day voter registration is, then walk you through how it works, the current SDR obstacles that we've seen on the field, and how this bill addresses those obstacles. We also have a conceptual amendment that was uploaded to Nellis earlier today. Um, there was one um, amendment, and then we have a second one that was created and uploaded uh, a little bit ago. Um, so what is SDR, same-day voter registration? In 2019, um, this legislative body passed Assembly Bill 345, which enacted many election-related policies. Of those policies, the one that we're focusing on today is same-day voter registration, SDR. Same-day voter registration is the process by which an eligible Nevada, uh, Nevada voter can register to vote or update their voter registration at the polling place during early voting or on election day before casting their ballot. Since its passage, it's been used in the 2020 and 2022 election cycles. There are a variety of reasons voters use SDR, including a recent address change, becoming a US citizen, and a name change. As a reminder, in order to register to vote, the registrant must uh, have been a Nevada resident for the last 30 days before election day and a resident of their precinct for at least 10 days before election day. In Nevada, people move all the time, both within the state and individuals coming in from other states. In 2020 alone, almost 70,000 new Nevadans surrendered their out-of-state driver's license or ID to ex um, in exchange for a Nevada driver's license or ID. In the 2020 general election, over 26,500 Nevadans used same-day voter registration throughout the state. This information is available on the Secretary of State's website. 72% of folks who participated in SDR were existing registrants that updated their voter registration, and the remaining 28 were new voters. Voters of all political affiliation use SDR. From the statewide total in 2022, the breakdown is Republican voters were the largest party to use SDR at 9,839. Democratic voters came in second at 9,250, and their meaning of voters were either nonpartisans or uh, belonged to a smaller political party. 
for example, here in, the, um, here in Carson City, um, for the 2020 general election, there were 166 Republican voters, 93 Democratic voters, 57 nonpartisans, and 33 uh, voters who belonged to other parties that participated in same-day voter registration. Um, so let's talk about SCR and um, this particular bill. Um, so when a voter goes to a polling location um, and they say that they want to um, register to vote and uh, use same-day voter registration, usually our amazing poll workers will say, great, and ask for an ID. Um, in AB 345, the ID the voter needs to provide is a current, valid, um, unexpired driver's license or ID card. And that voter's current address has to be um, this ID has to be issued by the Department of Motor Vehicles, and it, um, it serves as a proof of their identity and residency. If the voter has an unexpired Nevada driver's license or ID, the voter is good to go and can vote immediately. Um, this is usually, you know, mo most, in most situations, it's what happens. Where it gets a little bit tricky and what SB 443 addresses is what happens if the SDR voter does not have an unexpired license or ID from the Nevada Department of Motor Vehicles. Um, in scenario one, if the Nevada driver's license or ID is current and valid, um, they usually have certain pr proofs of identification that they have to use and they're, they're good to go. Um, but if they, for example, have a, an ID that's a Nevada ID that is, um, that's expired, they can use an interim document from the DMV in its place. This means voters can leave the polls, go to the DMV with their interim document, return to the polls, and vote. We want to salute the Department of Motor Vehicles for offering specific hours for walk-in registration in the last two elections in, in several uh, Nevada cities. However, it's not news to anyone that going to the DMV sometimes means waiting. And what happens if the voter cannot afford to wait at the DMV? And we strongly believe that the ability and privilege to wait in line should not affect your ability to cast your ballot. That's why this bill language includes the expansion of the DMV uh, opening their hours more. So for counties that have over 100,000 um, folks, the DMV will open on Saturdays and Sundays to apply or renew their license or ID. Um, in scenario three, the individual is an eligible Nevada voter, but they just moved to Nevada from a different state and they just don't have a current Nevada I license or ID. If this is the case for this individual, um, they right now they would have to go to the DMV and get an interim document. And if they're not able to do that in time, then they're pretty much out of luck and not able to participate in same day voter registration and cast their ballot. And we know from our work on the ground and speaking to voters, this has been a hindrance in several, in many instances. Um, we've received feedback to spe specify the type of photo, photo at identification voters can use and all of that is particularly covered um, in this type of bill. Um, I think one thing I wanted to just bring to light as well um, with this is that um, through one of the things that we do when we're not here in the Nevada legislature is that we run a nonpartisan election protection program with the ACLU of Nevada and all of our coalition partners. And we actually um, had a particular situation. Uh, one of our partners, Make the Road of Nevada, they reached out to us because they had a member who experienced this. They did not have an ID. They had just moved to Nevada about uh, 60 days before and they didn't know what to do. We advised them the steps that they needed to take and they went to the DMV. Um, but it took quite some time for them to be able to get all of their documents into play and be able to um, get their actual ID. So luckily they were able to cast their ballot um, but this is something that we just don't want, we want to be proactive about. I have other comments here, but I know that we're running tight on time and you all have been so amazing and it's been a long day. So um, we're open for any questions.
Not seeing any questions uh, from the others. I just have one in section three, sub two B. Why stay open six days after the election? Yeah. May uh, I? Please go. Um, for the record, Emily Prasad Zamora, um, to you, uh, uh, Vice Chair Daly, it's a great question, and the particular reason why is that we uh, we wanted to leave it open due to ballot curing. Um, if somebody's participating via vote. Uh, via mail ballot and there is an issue with their identification for any reason we've seen this even with regular voters who have been uh, voting for quite some time um, the Department of Motor Vehicles being open for extended hours would give folks the ability to go in person and update their information uh, th thank you for that and I, I have in my notes there curing question mark that's what I was <laughs> thinking it was for just wanted to double check uh, seeing no other questions from the committee, if that's it for your presentation. You don't have anybody else, do you? No, thank you. Thank you. You guys uh, wanted to step back. We'll open it up for testimony in support here in Carson City or Las Vegas. We'll go ahead and start here in Carson City. Good evening, Chair and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Christine Saunders, and I'm the Policy Director with the Progressive Leadership Alliance of Nevada, here in support of Senate Bill 443. All eligible Nevadans should have access to voting in all elections they are eligible for. We have worked for more than a decade to remove barriers to voting, and this includes same-day voter registration. Despite misinformation, your identity must be verified to register to vote in Nevada. To comply with our same-day voter registration laws, we need to ensure that folks needing to update anything with the DMV have the ability to do so by making sure the DMV stays open extra hours. It's a worthy investment to ensure that Nevada, Nevada's elections remain the most professional and safe in the county by ensuring people have their IDs to vote and are not disenfranchised by bureaucracy and red tape. We urge your support. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, who's ever next? Committee members, uh, Tony Ramirez for the record. Uh, I'm here representing Make the Road Nevada, a Nevada-based nonprofit which elevates the power of working class immigrant communities uh, all around the state. Um, and we thank the bill sponsor and the presenter uh, for bringing this bill forward. And we are in support. Thank you. Vice Chair, Vice Chair Daly, members of the committee, Isaac Tenorio with Strategy 60, today representing Campaign Legal Center Action Fund. Uh, we thank the sponsor and Senator Ornshaw for this uh, a very important bill. Uh, we believe that it would increase access to voting, and we think that's a good thing. So we urge your support on this bill. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, seeing no others in Carson, we'll move down to uh, Las Vegas. Please proceed. State your name for the record. And State your name for the record. Good afternoon, Chair and Committee. My name is Jose Rivera. I am a community organizer with Make the Road Nevada. We are here in support of SB 443. We support this measure, which expands accessibility to democracy. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next speaker. Next speaker. Yes, good evening. I am Lalo Montoya, L-A-L-O-M-O-N-T-O-Y-A, and I ditto. Thank you. Please proceed. In support. Good afternoon, Chair. Thank you for having me. My name is Alejandra Muñeton Carrera, A-L-E-J-A-N-D-R-A, M-U-N-E-T-O-N-C-A-R-R-E-R-A, -R -R -E -R -A, and I ditto. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing nobody else in Carson or Las Vegas uh, in person uh, broadcasting, can we go to the phones for support of Senate Bill 443? Let's define support of SB 443. Press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Again, to testify in support of SB 443, press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Hello, Chair, members of the committee. My name is Dayla Gibson, D-A-E-L-A-G-I-B-S-O-N, speaking on behalf of Planned Parenthood Votes Nevada. We support this bill and ditto other supportive testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Broadcasting, next caller. Good 
Good evening, Vice Chair Daly and committee members. My name is Brian Harris, and on behalf of Battleborn Progress and uh, being a member of the Latin Nevada Vote Coalition, we are in support of SB 443. This bill can help ensure all eligible voters have equal access to exercise their right to vote, promote a more fair and democratic election process by extending DMV hours and allowing folks to receive proper forms of identification for same-day voter registration. Furthermore, this bill will alleviate long wait times and reduce crowding at our election sites. Thank you for your time, and I ask that you please support SB 443. Thank you. Broadcasting? Hello, Vice Chair and Committee members. My name is Amy Koo, A-M-Y-K-O-O, -O, and I'm the Acting Deputy Director with One API in Nevada, an organization that advocates for the AA and HPI community here in Nevada. Ditto to all the previous comments. We saw the impact that the DMV had to make it easier for Nevadans to register to vote, especially during the pandemic, and it makes sense to expand DMV's uh, services before elections to give Nevadans more opportunities to register to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Chair Orenshaw and members of the committee, my name is Linda Stout, L-I-N-D-A-S-T-O-U-T, a volunteer member of the Sierra Club's Legislative Committee. On behalf of the club, the world's largest environmental volunteer organization and our more than 30,000 30, members, and supporters statewide, I am speaking in support of SB 443. Um, ditto to everything that's been said, the Sierra Club has long recognized the interdependence of a healthy environment and healthy democracy. Limited access to voter registration impacts both. SB 443 will help new and existing residents alike as it accommodates demographics like younger voters and voters of color who are more likely to change addresses. No resident should be penalized for not having a driver's license or photo ID with an updated address. Voting is a right. For these reasons, we urge you to support this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, please. Chair, there are no more callers at this time. Thank you. Broadcasting, let's stay on the phones and go to opposition to Senate Bill 443 on the phones. To testify in opposition of SB 443, press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Again, to testify in opposition of SB 443, press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Thank you to the vice chair and members of this committee. My name is Alita Benson, executive director of the Nevada Republican Party, testifying in opposition to SB 443 on behalf of the Nevada Republican Party. SB 443 would provide yet another delay in reporting final, accurate election results. Provisional ballots, which come primarily from same-day voter registrations, are already difficult and complex for counties to manage. This bill would add further complexity and delays to the process for no reason, because it is already excessively easy to register to vote in Nevada. You can register to vote online, in person, automatically at the DMV, or at the polling place on Election Day. Once registered, voters have ballots delivered to them free of charge without even asking. Registering and voting in Nevada is so easy that there's simply no reason to make it harder on counties to deliver results in an effort to make it even easier. It should be easy to vote and hard to cheat. An official photo ID should be free of charge to anyone who does not have the means to obtain them. Provisional ballots, unlike unsolicited mail-in ballots, do require proof of ID. However, adding an additional six days of special treatment to enable people to vote after the election is over adds unneeded complexity when most adults already have a photo ID as part of functioning in society. Please vote no on SB 443. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, please. One moment, Chair. You're unmuted now. Hi, my name is Jessica Ansel for the record. J E S S I C A A M C E L L. And I oppose SB 443 and Echo. 
um, the opposition before me and behind me. Thank you. You can have the rest of my time. Thank you. Uh, broadcasting still in opposition. Next caller, please. Yeah, there are no more callers at this time. Thank you. Uh, so at this time, we'll go ahead and go to opposition. We'll start in Clark County. So if there's anybody down there that wants to speak in opposition, make sure you come up to the dais before we uh, switch to Carson, or at least before we finish opposition testimony. So please proceed. And again, I'll remind everybody to stick to the bill, please. Hi, Katrina Ivanov. I-V-A-N-O-F-F, a.k.a. Mrs. Fixit, uh, Assembly District 42, Senate District 9. I am in strong opposition of this bill. The way this bill is written, it discriminates against the rural counties. And also, why is Planned Parenthood supporting this bill? What is it, what is it in there for them? I don't know, just a question. Uh, I just want to know, why do we make it easier for people that don't care about elections to be voting in our elections. In order to vote in an election, you should make a research of who is running, and you should be able to register in the amount of time that you have right now, not run last sec second, second to be uh, voting and registering and all that. That should be done in a, simple, in a prior amount of time that is allowed. And we have such a mistrust in the elections on both parties, not just Republican, also Democrats, many of them don't trust elections, and you're making it easier for people not to trust. I'm starting to think that that is actually the idea behind all these bills that you're trying to push this time around, because I don't see any other reasoning. If you want people to trust in the elections, make ID to show up when you vote, prove who you are. Plus, I don't see anything in this bill about proof of citizenship. Don't you have to have citizenship in order to vote? Why are we not trying to make sure that the citizens are the ones that are voting? Otherwise, our votes get diluted. Thank you so much. I know it's been a hard day. I know you're trying your best. I really appreciate your hard work, work but I do hope that you start representing your voters more this time around. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Y'all have really taken some from us today, and I apologize if we've offended anyone. My name is Susan Prophet, and I am the vice president of the Nevada Republican Club. Now, I oppose this bill, but if you make one change, I won't oppose it. I will back it, and I will ask everybody to back it. Uh, because it really is doing something that's good. It's having the DMV register the voters, and I like that because when I was observing at the ROV, I saw a lot of people coming in there on the same day, uh, election day, to register, and I heard them talking to the people behind the counter, and I know that some of them drove in from California and they didn't live here. So I really like this idea, but I, r I would suggest that you take it one step further and require, if you, if you're going to require an ID to register at the DMV, why not to vote? That would eliminate all the other problems we have. I mean, then you wouldn't even have a problem with all mail-in ballots because you would have to have some kind of proof. So um, I, I really would suggest you do that. And please, please put Lombardo's uh, voter ID bill, SB 405, on, uh, on the um, schedule because we, we need it desperately. Thank you very much, and I hope you'll consider my suggestion. And um, have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, please. Next speaker, please. Yes, thank you for all for staying so late. I know it's for, pretty late for you all. Um, my name is Leslie Quinn, for the record, um, and I oppose SB 443. SB 443 lends itself to allowing non-United States citizens to vote. The, 22nd, the 26th Amendment states, the right of citizens of the United States who are 18 years of age or older to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of age. Why am I saying that? because of the 10th Amendment. 
The Tenth Amendment states the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Why does that matter? Because these are 19 states that are giving immigrant illegals driver's license right now. Those states are California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, Rhode Island, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, and Washington. Please oppose SB 443. Each of these states decided that these folks could get their DMV license. So the DMV license would not be an accurate way to prove if these folks are U.S. citizens. They should be the only ones allowed to vote, being 18 and above. And I really appreciate you, uh, Senator Gansert, for uh, your fighting for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, please. C-Y-R-U-S-H-O-J-J-A-T-Y. First of all, I'd like to be very cautious about organizations that I see Craigslist ads that would testify for immigrants' rights, like Make the Road Nevada, be cautious. Other than that, I'd like to ditto uh, the comments made by the previous and future uh, speakers in opposition. Yield my time. Thank you. Do we have any other people that wish to speak in opposition in Clark County? Not coming back. Okay. Anybody in Carson City? Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'm speaking as the state chairman of the Independent American Party. Now, I've been a voter in Nevada ever since I was old enough to vote. And I think one of the things about voting is it takes some amount of responsibility. If you want to know who, what the issues are in the ballot, because we often have questions, if you want to know about the candidates, you have to spend some amount of time finding about, out about those. Now, if you come in on the very last day and you haven't even bothered to get uh, ID in the state of Nevada, how in the world can you be a responsible voter? Now this is interesting because this bill discriminates against me and my county. I'm from Elko. This only covers two counties and I'm sure we have as many irresponsible people per capita in Elko County as they have in Washoe or in Clark. But um, this is only for Washoe and Clark County so that they would be open. The rurals already feel like they're kind of, um, you know, the bad boy on the block because so many things um, are just decided by Clark County. And so I think this is a, a very bad idea to encourage people to be irresponsible instead of saying, you know, if you're going to be a voter, you have to figure something out in advance. They allow them to vote even if they haven't registered previously. They can vote on Election Day, but if they haven't even got any ID, I don't know how, what kind of a responsible voter they may be. Um, that concerns me because, in addition, this is going to cost money. Uh, it's going to cost money to keep the DMVs open. And we don't want to spend any more money on government. We want less government and more individual responsibility and more liberty. And this certainly doesn't provide that. And so we oppose this bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you. Any other... Uh People wishing to speak in opposition to SB 443 in Carson City. Seeing none, uh, we'll go to neutral in Carson City. And if anybody is in Clark County uh, neutral, come on up and we'll get to you any shortly. Hello, committee. Ashley Garza Kennedy again representing Clark County here to testify in neutral to Senate Bill 443. We appreciate um, the senator and the bill proponents working with us on uh, the conceptual amendment that was presented, and we are neutral. Uh, we had some administrative questions that I think um, have been clarified, and just appreciate the sponsors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other uh, testimony in neutral in person broadcasting, can we go to the phone for neutral testimony on Senate Bill 443? 
Justify neutral to SB443. Press star nine to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers wishing to testify neutral at this time. Thank you, uh, Senator. If you want to come up and give your closing remarks. Vice Chair Daly, members of the committee, I know the hour is late. Thank you for hearing this bill. I believe Senate Bill 443 goes a long way if passed to remove obstacles that sometimes present themselves in front of qualified electors who want to participate to vote. Uh, as to some of the concerns that were brought up regarding the DMV, currently I believe it's only Clark and Washoe that DMVs that have Saturday hours. And in my conversations with the Department of Motor Vehicles, there were definitely some challenges in trying to have this apply to all 17 counties. That's the reason that we followed currently existing statute um, and limited it to counties above 100,000. As to the questions about citizenship, certainly anyone who swears out a voter registration affidavit to register to vote affirms that they are a United States citizen. Uh, Vice Chair, with your indulgence, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Prasad Zamora to allow her to make some closing comments too. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Senator Orenshaw. Um, and I just wanted to say um, thank you very much uh, to the committee for your time and for your indulgence. I did want to say um, I think one of the important things um, is that this is not a voter ID. It's just protecting the current statutes of same-day voter registration and just expanding that. I, so I just wanted to make that particularly clear. And I also wanted to just to, um, to just say that Particularly, we wanted to bring this uh, bill forward because we are grassroots organizations that are on the ground every day talking to voters of all political parties. And we see there as folks who have the privilege of being educated on the political process, um, it's our responsibility to hear what you know, everyday Nevadans, what's wrong, you know, what they see as being the, the hurdles in the voting system. Um, and so we really appreciate um, the Senator and the committee members for your time. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Thank you, committee members. Thank, thank you. And with that, we'll close the hearing on Senate Bill 443. And we'll uh, welcome our chair back, uh, back uh, up here. We are going to be in a brief recess. Members, there is some uh, pizza that we ordered. Anybody who'd like, who's hanging around in my office, if anyone would like to get a bite to eat, please help yourself. There's some pizza and some other junk food Can in the we office. we just have public comment real quick before you go? Because, and then we'll get out of your hair. I swear it'll Ms. take us what, I, six minutes? I'm very sorry, we're gonna be at a brief recess. We will come back in just a little bit and we will take public comment. We are hoping to uh, possibly have a work session. So we're in recess.
I'm ready. Uh, members, we will come back to order. I appreciate everyone's patience during the recess. Uh, I, we don't have a work session document, but tonight we heard Senate Bill 162. So I don't think we really need one. An amendment was presented by Senator Scheibel, and uh, we, we heard the bill. I would be interested in a, a vote today if there's a vote, a motion to amend and do pass Senate Bill 162 with the amendment Senator Scheibel presented. Senator Daly, I have a motion to amend and do pass. Yes. Is there a second? Second. Second by Senator Severs Gansert. Any discussion on the motion? Um, yes, thank you. Senator Severs Gansert. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. With the amendment, it's clear that and with the, the testimony that folks who are in the uh, incarcerated right now who are still eligible to vote, so they're sort of pending, um, they've, they've, they're, they've not been convicted of something that precludes them from voting, are already able to vote, but we don't understand the processes by which they are um, able to vote. So in my mind, this legislation will require them to provide the information about the processes to the Secretary of State to make sure that we do have a check on that system and there um, we do have uh, we, we know how they are taking care of the ballots and making sure that um, they're appropriately delivered. So therefore, I'm going to be supporting this measure. I, I think it's important for us to have that information since we, we really don't know how they're doing it right now, but we do know that they are doing it, which, again, these are um, all eligible voters. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Severs Gansert. And any other, any other comments and discussion? Senator Krasner. Thank you, Chair. Um, I still have some concerns that I need to discuss with some of the people that live in the district that I represent. So I'm going to be a no now, but reserve my right to change my vote prior to floor. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Krasner. Okay, not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, Madam Secretary, please note that the measure has passed with three votes in favor and uh, one nay reserving Senator Krasner is reserving her right to change on the floor, and the majority leader is excused. And, um, I think I, I got that right. There was not a okay, second reservation. With that, I would like now to move to our last item on our agenda, public comment. Anyone who'd like to make public comment, we'll start here in Carson City, then we'll go to the Sawyer Building, then we'll go to the phone lines. Thank you very much. Mike Lobby, L-A-B-I-T for the record. Uh, I 
I made a comment under uh, Bill 404, and I think that we have a, a miscommunication still going, and so I wanted to bring this up because this is something that I think is really real, and it's something that we can't tolerate. And it's not anything about Republican and, or Democrat or Independent or anybody. All of us agree that we want to have people uh, have the right and are able to cast their votes and know that they are secure. Now, the, I bring up the, the point that if somebody votes or if a vote comes in, a ballot comes in by mail, then it will be counted if the signature is verified. Later, if somebody comes in and they have, and they come in even with their ID and they say, I want to vote, and they're told, you have, we have, you already have your vote counted or you have already voted. Now, that person will be disenfranchised, period, because there is no way that we have in the state of going back and finding that ballot that was cast fraudulently. There's no way. And I challenge you all to actually get with the Secretary of State's office and prove me wrong, please. And I'm trying to work with them as well. Now, the question is not, Something has been, you know, tabulated, but we haven't, you know, actually counted it until after the election. That's not the issue, because that ballot is going to be tabulated and it will be, at the end, confirmed as a vote. And I've checked with three of the registrars, and they say the first ballot that comes in that we have a verified signature on, that is the one that will be counted. So I'm going to pass my time. Thank you very much for hearing me. I really think it's important for all of us to make sure that we have no one disenfranchised. Thank you very much, Mr. Labitt. Thank you for being here so late and making your comment. I don't see anyone else here in Carson City. So now at the Sawyer Building, please state your name for the record and proceed. My name is Leslie Quinn, um, and I'd like to just uh, give a couple of comments. Um, from Winston Churchill, it would be a great reform in politics if wisdom could be made to spread as easily and rapidly as folly. And then another one that I just thought was really neat that maybe I can just share with you guys. I dream of a world where the truth is what shapes people's politics rather than politics shaping what people think is true. I really appreciate it when I see the legislators actually pay attention to us. Sometimes I feel like um, all of people speaking because we're not on the same political agenda or political team, we're being placated. And I just want to, everybody to remember, we're all on the same earth. If anything happened dangerous, uh, there was a tsunami or major earthquake, I would share what I have with each and every one of you. If I saw you broken down on the freeway, I wish we would just learn to just work together and, and be willing to even get more Republican bills on, like, um, AB 330, school uh, uh, discipline, AB 400, school choice, SB 405, election reform, SB 412, criminal justice, SB 431, state government administra administering task forces, and AB 230. And the sad thing is, is that these things aren't coming about, and I don't know why. It just seems like mostly all the bills that are coming about are just from one party. And that's not right. That's not equitable by any means. So thank you for listening to me. And I hope you guys take that to heart. And it's just not like, you know, a gnat in your ear. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Quinn. Thank you for your comments. Uh, good evening. Please state your name for the record and proceed. Yes, my name is Ed Euling, U-E-H-L-I-N-G. Uh, what all this comes down to is the integrity of the election. And that's where Nevada is the laughing stock of the nation already. It, um, uh, I happen to be in the, uh, in an island, an isolated island in the Philippines on the day that they had their voting. And they were able to count 60 million votes and know the results of the election the very next day. And, uh, uh I, uh, there's, there's, um, <laughs> Even though the Philippines has, has been in the, in the past considered one of the most corrupt, uh, 
countries in the world. It doesn't even begin to compare with what's going on now in, the, in Nevada. There's there, the uh, verification of signatures is, is totally false. The, uh, the editor of the Review Journal signed uh, nine different, uh, I think, I believe it was nine different uh, ballots, uh, mail-in ballots, and uh, 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 six of them were accepted by the, uh, by the, uh, the system that we have in the state. It, there, it, there are huge faults with this system. And just, and, and the notion that, uh, <laughs> it's so laughable, the notion that you're going to start counting votes early and the party which selects the, the um, uh, registrar of voters isn't going to be able to learn the results of, the, of those first days of the election. That's, that's crazy. If you're going to count votes, inform the whole world of what the votes are. Uh, everyone knows that there's rampant, uh, rampant corruption, uh, particularly here in Clark County, and, uh, and th there's no question that something like that w wouldn't happen. And uh, we had an example of it right here at, uh, in, the, uh, in the hearing. The gentleman sitting next to you with the white hair. Uh, Mr. Ewing, we're at two minutes. I do need you to wrap up your comments. Okay, can I can I make the comparison of the what happened right in this very hearing, uh, Mr. Ewing? We are we are at the two minutes. You can submit any comments you have uh, in writing to the committee. Thank you. So nice. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Broadcasting. We'll now go to the phone lines. If you would like to provide public comment, press star nine to take your place in the queue now. Hi, for the record, Katrin Ivanov, I V A N O Frank Frank, aka Mrs. Sixted, Assembly District 42, Senate District 9. I want to say that for so many years, we were able to do same day, day election, we were able to get same day results, and only after you start messing up, and by you, I mean legislature on both parties, start messing up with the election laws and coming up with new rules and new creative ideas to cheat, only then we are not able to know the results in a timely manner. The, please stop messing up with our elections. Stop eroding the trust in our elections. We are such a beautiful country, the only one of its kind in the whole world. Don't make us like communist countries. Don't don't make us a banana republic. Please, uh, please listen to uh, Lombardo's view uh, 405. Tomorrow is the last day you can listen and get it out of committee. Please do that. This is what the people want. We don't want all this nonsense that you're bringing up to the table. And thank you so much for working hard they know everybody's doing their best but sometimes our best is coming short so anyway thank you for trying have a lovely day and i will see you tomorrow again or talk to you thank you bye thank you for your testimony Call Hello, my name, is, my name is Jessica Ansel, for the record. I would like to thank our facilitators for being so accommodating today. It hasn't necessarily been the case from other chairs, like when we've waited for hours on the line and then are muted and not heard as soon as we start speaking, but today there is much improvement, so I thank you for that. And I want to ditto what Leslie Quinn said. I'd like the opportunity for AB 300 AB 400, SB 412, SB 431, SB 405, AB 230 to be heard as well. Thank you so much, and I give you the rest of my time. Thank you for your testimony.
Hello, my name is Lorena Cardenas. That's L-O-R-E-N-A-C-A-R-D-E-N-A-S. And I'm in Assembly District 5, Senate District 8. And I am um, in support of getting all these bills heard because we are desperate for transparency. And there's been a huge blame game, the right versus the left, pointing fingers. If we put everything transparently on the table, on time, in a timely manner, no funny games, no little loopholes, no backdoor dates now and extensions. Let's do everything the way it's always been. Why are we tampering with elections? If we can't trust our election system, we can't trust our government. And this benefits you, uh, our legislators too, legislators, because if we lose faith in our legislators, we lose faith in everything in our government. And it ends up being, uh, I mean, the politics like third world country politics, and we don't want that for America. So we really need transparency. If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear, let's do everything in a timely manner, get our elections up and running normally, and uh, that's what I think would be best for everyone, every citizen in America. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Broadcasting, is there anyone else on the phone lines for public comment? Yeah, there are no more calls to provide public comment. Thank you, members, for your patience this late hour. Uh, I was hoping we'd be done tonight, but it looks like we are going to have one more brief meeting tomorrow. It will be at the call of the chair, but I hope that we will meet close to around 1130 and uh, quickly finish our business before the deadline. With that, we are adjourned. And thank you to all the staff for staying so late. I appreciate everyone working so hard. Our, uh, th thank you, staff.